Welcome to I Still Believe with Pastor Sherry Dameron. Have you ever gotten stuck? What do you do when you're caught in the mundane, vicious, everyday cycle of life and in your walk with God? The Make Room series consists of four sermons that will help you, number one, aim at where you're going, and number two, get over where you've been. This invaluable teaching set will help you identify and close the door on the predators along the way of your journey. Experience the Word of God with Pastor Sherry Dameron when you give a love gift of $40 or more to Sherry Dameron Ministries. You'll receive the Make Room series featuring four sermons that are sure to change your life from a negative to a positive. To order these series today, you can email us at info at sherrydameron.com for the Make Room Package or call us at 888-557-SDM7. Again, that's 888-557-SDM7 and tell the person on the other end of the line that you're interested in receiving the Make Room Package. This morning, what we're going to talk about is what are you waiting for? He's already told you it's yours. He's already told you that you are above and not beneath. That you are a conqueror. More than a conqueror. I believe I heard somebody preach. He's already told you, you shall possess the land. What are you waiting for? So the main thing that we're going to, the main thing that we're going to, our topic this morning is going to be this. Decisions. Decisions. Come to church to hear from the Lord. You have to make a decision to act on what you hear. Because it doesn't matter how much you hear him speak. Oh, he woke me up in the middle of the night and he was talking to me. What are you doing? With what he said. We want everybody to know how much he woke us up in the middle of the night. And how long we prayed. But what are you accomplishing for the kingdom of God? What are you accomplishing? Decisions. What is a decision? It's a choice made after deliberation. A choice made after deliberation. It means to gather information with the intent of reaching a specific destination. A specific destination. If you go out there and you get in your car and I say, where are you going? You say, I, I don't know. I'm just going around in circles. Something's wrong with you. Leave the house. Get in the car. Go to Walmart and just sit there. Something's wrong. You ain't ever going to amount to nothing. You ain't ever going to get that stuff out of Walmart that's in there. As long as you just sit there. Okay? You've got to make a decision. After you gather your information, what are you going to do with the information that you've gathered? Okay? Y'all good? Decisions. Watch this. Always begin... With a question. Okay? But the end result depends on the information that you gather in between the question and the execution of the decision. Those are big words, wasn't they? Aren't y'all proud of me? I'm sounding smarter every day. I've been hanging around Gigi. Pick up some of her words. I'm going to get smart for us all over with. Your Bible is a book of questions and answers. It's full of questions and answers. I've heard a lot of people preach that that Bible is just, all it is is, is answers. No, it's questions and answers. Okay, it's both. Questions and answers. And you're, watch this. Your life is an open book test. Okay, you hear me? The Bible is a book of questions and answers. Your life is an open book test. If you open the book, you pass the test. You rely on people, you fail miserably. You better not rely on what somebody else tells you about the book. Okay? That's why you keep failing. When, when you come to church, that's why I give you those notes. When you come, I want you to know where I got my scriptures from. 
I want you to know that I didn't take it out of context and make up my own story. Okay? It's my story and I'm sticking to it. If it ain't right, you better not stick to it. Okay? We've sat under teaching that they gave us scripture, but it was erroneous. And we failed miserably. Okay? We ain't doing that anymore. I want to look at Romans and I want to give you a question because Paul asked us a question. Romans 8 and 35, he asked this. He said, who or what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Now, that's a question right there for you. And it's a question worth answering, is it not? Who or what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Shall any of these things separate us from the love of Christ? And as, as it is written, for your sake, we were killed all the day long and we were accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Here comes your answer to that question. No one or nothing. I looked it up because I wanted to know. Your King James Version says no in all these things. But your Greek says no one nor anything shall separate you from the love of Christ. Because in all these things, all what things? Peril, sword, persecution, famine, all these things, you are more than a conqueror. How? Through Him. Through Him that loved us. You mean I'm more than a conqueror when somebody pays my light bill? No, your lights can go off and you're still more than a conqueror through Him. I'm more than a conqueror when my children come home? No, you're more than a conqueror while the children are out there acting a fool. You are still more than a conqueror through Him. Okay? you got to believe Him above your circumstance. But if I focus on the circumstance, I'm going to believe it. You hear me? Y'all good? Here's the decision. Paul gave you a question. He gave you an answer. Now here's the decision that Paul made and that you have to come to, for I am persuaded. Hey! That right there, I can sit down. Because if you'll ever get persuaded in all these things, if you'll ever get persuaded that He is the Son of God, that He set this world into orbit, that He set you in His image, if you ever get persuaded, nothing or no one can stop you from your destination. That's good news right there. For I am persuaded that neither death kill me, but you can't separate me. Talk about me, lie on me, but you can't. Tell the truth about me. It's bad when they mess up and they say something bad about you. That's the truth. But it can't separate me from who I know I am in Christ Jesus. It can't separate me. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come. No height, no depth, nor any other creature. Don't look at your husband or your wife. Nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So if I'm going to be effective in the kingdom of God, and if I'm going to be effective in my everyday life, what have I got to be? Persuaded. Just persuaded. Some of you, if you'll just write that word down and tattoo it on your... Don't run out into the tattoo parlor, Jesus. Put it on your, on your forehead. Sister Pat was on her way to get a tattoo. And put it on your forehead or put it in, on your mirror. Put it in your car or something. Just put the word persuaded. When the boss says you, uh, gives you your pink slip, is it still called a pink slip? They might email it to you now. I don't know. But when the boss says you're fired, you need to be sitting down in your car and going, I'm persuaded. There's a better job on the way. I'm making more money in the next job. I'm going to be an entrepreneur tomorrow. I might be fired today, but I'm going to start my, I'm going to be running corporate America tomorrow. Because I'm persuaded, see. I'm persuaded. Proverbs 18 and, and 10, Solomon said it like this. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Strong tower. He said the righteous run... The, what, listen to me, the righteous run into it, and he didn't say the wicked. That must mean sometimes the righteous are going to run. So in other words, don't get all upset because everything ain't right, because the Lord just told you you're going to run sometimes. Sometimes it's not going to go just right. The Bible, here's the thing, running in what direction? 
What is going to determine your rise or your fall is in what direction do you run? The Lord is a strong tower, and I am persuaded that when I run into him, I am saved. Y'all good? I'm helping myself. I don't know if I'm helping y'all, but I'm helping me. Psalms 103 and 1 says it like this. Bless the Lord. He didn't know I was going to say that this morning. Brother Marcel had no idea. He started saying, bless the Lord. I said, that's it, that's it, that's it. Sing it, brother, sing it. Don't you love it when everybody works in one mind and one accord? Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. My thoughts, my failures, the things that I hide from my own self. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. I will bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. It didn't say, and forget not all of my mess ups. It said, forget not all of his benefits. When I messed up, the benefits are still good. My husband was in the Air Force for 22 years. He has benefits from the Air Force. I didn't do a thing to earn them, but I get them. Because I married the right man. You don't have to do a thing to earn them, but you get them because you, you submitted yourself under the right man. Is that good? So what was David doing? What was he doing? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Let me tell you what he was doing. In the middle of the, of the test, in the middle of the test, in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the trial, he was saying, self, listen to me. You will bless the Lord. That's what David was doing. David was being persuaded. He was having to persuade his own self. Listen to me. Things ain't looking too good right now. But I will bless the Lord. Sometimes you've got to persuade your own self to bless the Lord. Because Facebook ain't going to persuade you. Your neighbor's not going to persuade you. You have to persuade yourself to bless the Lord. The Lord who forgives all of my iniquities. How many? All. all of them. Who heals all of my diseases. How many? All. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. And who satisfies your mouth with good things. Some of y'all need to get your mouth satisfied with good things. Okay? So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That's better than Botox. So that you're... I'm sorry, I'm trying to act right, but you know me, I can't help it. I just open my mouth and there it comes. So what am I doing right now? What am I doing? Pastor, what are you doing? Can I tell you what I'm doing? What I'm doing is I am giving you good information so that you can make the correct decision. That's what I just did. Because that's what you should come to church to get. Good information. If you'll receive that information, you will leave here and you will make good decisions. Okay? Is that good? Now that's my foundation. I ain't got started yet. Let's go to 2 Kings because I'm going I'm to burn it up. 2 Kings 7 and 3 says this. Everybody on TV that's trying to find 2 Kings, it comes right after 1 Kings. Those of you here, you got it in your notes. 2 Kings 7 and 3 says, And there were four leprous men. Whoo! It's going to be good. There were four leprous men at the entering end of the gate of Samaria. Here's what I'm about to do. I'm about to talk about the gate. Y'all thought I was going to talk about the lepers, didn't you? We can't talk about the lepers unless we understand the gate. We overlook stuff. Gate. Because watch this, the gate is where the, the decision begins. The gate is where the decision begins. Okay? Here's the thing. Let me explain. Let me give you just a little bit of background. There's a famine in the land. Okay? There's a famine in Samaria. And on top of the famine, the Syrian army, I had no idea that the Syrian army was fixing it. We were fixing to be in the news, but this is where God took me. So this is where I'm going. The Syrian army had surrounded the city of Samaria. So here they are. They're in a famine on the inside, and the enemy's encamped around about the outside. Anybody know exactly how they feel? 
a famine on the inside. Can I tell you Thanks something? for watching with us today on I Still Believe with Pastor Sherry Dameron. Now let's take a break from the message and enjoy this song written by Pastor Sherry herself called God Bless America Again. And then we'll get right back to the sermon. church and the enemy has encamped around about us and we can't go in and we can't come out but if anybody ever gets a little bit of the right information can I tell you something there's bread in Bethlehem there's bread in Bethlehem we're gonna feed some bread this morning the king of, of, of Syria I'm mean, excuse me of Samaria got angry with the prophet Elisha they always blame it on the prophet he got angry with the prophet Elisha and he sent his man to find the prophet Elisha and he said, I, I, I'm not going to rest till you bring me his head. I want you to kill him. I want you to kill him. And Elisha, when the men found him and they came to him, this is what Elisha, it, it, uh, Elisha wasn't moved because he was persuaded. He looked at them men and he said, about this time tomorrow, in 24 hours, he said, the famine is going to end. The little old king's men, they, they smarted off at him and they said, if the Lord would open the windows of heaven, that cannot be. You know what Elisha said? He said, it's going to happen, but you ain't going to see it. Amen. Yeah. 
If you don't believe the word of the Lord, you ain't going to see it. So don't worry about it. Just go ahead and hush and let somebody, because if you believe it, you'll see it. Sometimes we smart off at the word of the Lord. You better, you better be careful. He might smart back. Okay? Elisha said, you, you, it's going to happen. He said, but you're not going to see it. In 24 hours, what Elisha was telling them was, there's going to be a transition. It's going to switch around in 24 hours. And this is what Elisha told the men. He said, it's going to happen at the gate of the city. Go to the gate and watch. He said, because that's where it's going to happen. But here's what caught my attention. What caught my attention is, at the gate of the city, the only thing that the Bible tells us was there was four lepers. Nothing else was at the gate, but Elisha just told them there's going to be a transformation happen, and it's going to happen at the gate. Can I tell you a little secret? God has undercover, unsuspecting people in unusual places of transition. You would think there'd be an armed and ready king, uh, armed and ready army at the gate if there's going to be a transition. Ain't nothing but four little old lepers. Four men with issues. That's why I know we're going somewhere. We all got issues. <sighs> a gate is a place of transition. Anybody in transition? It's a place of transition. It's a place where either you enter or you exit, depending on the decision that you've made. But whether you enter, whether you go into your blessing, or you back out of your blessing, the thing is, either way, it's a transition. Either way, it's a transition. Transitions are important. Because watch this, battles are won and lost at the point of transition. Elections are won and lost at the point of transition. Can I tell you, life begins or ends. At the point of transition. Am I right? Yeah. The point of transition. Is an extremely important place. So what exactly is transition? Transition is this. It is being birthed. Can I tell you. The birthing place is a dark place. Yeah. It's being birthed. From one stage. To another. From one stage. To another. The places of transition are those dark and chaotic places in your life. Anybody there? Dark and chaotic place. If you don't think that it's a chaotic place, stand at the door of a mama about to birth a baby. Just stand. You ain't even got to go in. You ain't got to see it. Just stand at the door. You'll be glad you adopted. <laughs> at the point of transition, it's dark and it's chaotic. It's where you wonder this. Has God forgotten me? Has he completely forgotten what's going on in my life? Did he take a siesta? What is going on? I want to say something important right here, okay? Watch this. Be careful of the decisions that you make while you're in transition. Okay? Be careful of the decisions that you make when you're in transition. Because they will either make you or break you. Okay? But watch this. Whatever you do, make the decision. Make the decision. Because to decide nothing is certain death. I cannot stand here because I'm in a chaotic state and, not, and decide nothing. You have to at some point in time make a decision okay many women today are looking at their husband and saying just make a decision for just do something men are looking at their wife and saying just make a decision do something don't just sit here don't just keep sitting here and taking what comes to you make a decision let's transition here let's go somewhere else let's do something else let's get out and just ride around but we gotta do something because to sit there is to die. Watch this. Look at God. The city of Samaria has rejected these four leprous men. Rejected them. Kicked them out of the city. Put them completely out of the church. Put them out of the temple. Put them out of their homes. 
put them out of the city, and they labeled them unclean. Labeled them unclean. But God had strategically ordained the leprosy in the four unclean men. I believe I remember somebody preaching, if I'm not mistaken, that everything works together for God's good. Amen. The good, the bad, the ugly. All of it is ordained by God. Why did he ordain these four men to have leprosy? Let me tell you why. So that they would be rejected. So that he could position them for the survival of a whole city. It wasn't about them. It was about the survival of the whole city. Sometimes God will order something that you think is going to be the death of you. But he's ordering it so he can reposition you. So he can transition you. Because he needs to save somebody else. He needs to deliver somebody else. Y'all good? When we realized we couldn't get $375,000. God was repositioning us. Because he said, you already outgrown the six acres. What are you doing playing around over here on six acres? When I need you to have 60 acres. Because I got more in you than six acres. I've already taken you further than already. And we thought it was rejection. But it was what? Protection. My Lord have mercy. Can I tell you the very thing that you need is sitting in, is sitting in front of you. My daddy was sitting on that land the whole time. He thought he bought it for him. He didn't know he bought it for us. He bought it for us and had no idea. Let me tell you a secret. Keep your eyes on rejected people. Because rejection may be your greatest weakness, but it's God's greatest strength. It's God's greatest strength. Why is that? Can I tell you why? Anybody want to know why? Number one, because rejection equals isolation. And God has a funny way of using isolation to propel you into your preordained place. When you're isolated. Thanks for tuning in today to I Still Believe with Pastor Sherry Dameron. If you've enjoyed this portion of the message entitled, What Are You Waiting For? and would like to purchase this entire message, please call us now at 888 557 SDM7. Again, that's 888-557-SDM7. Or email us at info at sherrydameron.com.